In this problem, we want to find the sine of theta over two and the cosine of theta over two. If we're given that the tangent of theta is one half and theta is in between pi and three pi over two. Uh, so an angle between pi and three pi over two is an angle in quadrant three. So we want to try and we should probably draw a triangle in quadrant three and then evaluate the sine and cosine there. So angle in quadrant three, here we are. Uh, so again, uh, this triangle is not drawn to scale, but here we are. So here's theta, this is theta. We know that theta has a tangent of one half, so the opposite over the adjacent. Now, it's in the third quadrant, so both of these are negative directionally. Uh, and then we can find the measure of the hypotenuse by using the Pythagorean theorem. So one squared plus two squared equals c squared. So that's one plus four is equal to c squared. So c squared is five, which means this measure is the square root of five. So now let's find the sine of theta over two and the cosine of theta over two. So we need to figure out where theta over two is. So we know that theta is an angle measure in the third quadrant, but where will theta over two be? Now, if theta is some angle in between pi and three pi over two, right? If theta is in between three pi over two and pi, then we know, or we can uh, deduce that if we take theta and divide it by two, the interval that it will be on is just this interval cut in half. So this tells us then that theta over two is going to be in between, in between pi over two and three pi over four. And this measure, three pi over four and pi over two, this is gonna be in quadrant two, quadrant two. So we're gonna have an angle in quadrant two. And then that's really important because now we know in quadrant two, the sine is going to be positive, but the cosine is going to be negative, which means we're gonna use the positive version of the formula and then we'll use the negative version of the formula for the cosine. So let's evaluate the sine of theta over two. So the sine of theta divided by two is equal to, again, it's positive because we're looking at an angle in the uh, second quadrant. For the sine, it's positive there, so it's plus. And then it's one minus the cosine of theta. So the cosine here is going to be negative two over rad five. Uh, negative two over the square root of five, all divided by two. So we're subtracting a negative, so that's going to be a positive. So one plus, and then we could probably rationalize this to get two rad five over five, all divided by two. And then again, I would try and get rid of the fractions in the fraction. So I'm gonna multiply everything by five, right? By five over five, that just is really multiplying by one. So we can distribute in the numerator and that's gonna give us five plus two rad five, five plus two rad five, all divided by two times five, that's 10. And then the square root of this. And then we can break this up into two different radicals. So this is the square root of five plus two rad five all over the square root of 10. And to rationalize, we're gonna multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 times the square root of 10. And that gives us, so the square root of 10 is gonna multiply everything on the inside. Um, so 10 is gonna multiply by five. So we have the square root of 50 and then two times 10 is going to be 20. So 50 plus 20 rad five all over 
square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is just 10. So this is the sine of theta divided by 2. It's 50 plus 20 red 5 all over 10.